Hello, welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering at IIT Bombay. In this lecture, we are going to have an introduction to error control coding. So far, from what we have seen, we have had various practical issues in digital communication systems. Predominantly, these are noise or presence of a channel that affects the transmission that you send. And for each of these, we have been trying to find some ways to learn and compensate for these. However, as you have seen when we were discussing equalization and in the presence of noise, that is, there is no way to eliminate these effects. So you have to come up with ways by which you can further reduce their impact. In this context, error control coding is a very commonly used technique that can be used to both detect the presence of errors as well as to an extent correct for them. We will, be, we will be looking at a specific set of error control coding tools, specifically linear block codes over the next few lectures. <coughs> so we will be talking about bit error detection and correction. So all the discussions that we will be conducting henceforth are at the bit level before you perform the modulation operation that is conversion to a symbol or a constellation element. And we are going to talk specifically about binary linear codes. Binary linear codes are a class of error control codes that are very easy to implement and uh, you know are very, very useful. Although they are not the only types, these are very useful and very commonly used. So we will restrict our consideration to binary linear codes. And then we will specifically focus on one particular code called the Hamming code. And finally, we will make a remark about some more advanced error correction mechanisms and where they are applicable. So <clears throat> in terms of preliminaries, we are going to focus on a specific set of binary operations. Now these binary operations are basically addition and multiplication, but modulo 2. In other words, the plus operation essentially acts like an OR and the multiplication operation, I mean plus operation actually like an, acts like an XOR that is, and the multiplication operation acts like a, an AND. So let me just kind of uh, give you, look at these as truth tables. So if you look at this plus right, this can be looked upon as an XOR operation, while this particular table can be looked at as an AND operation because 0, XOR 0 is 0, 1 XOR 1 is 0, 0 XOR 1 and 1 XOR 0 are both 1. Similarly, for in the AND case, 1 AND 1 is 0, 0 0 0 1 1 0 are all, for in the case of 0 AND 0, of course, it's 0, 0 AND 1 is 1, 1 AND 0 is 1, and you can see that this essentially looks exactly like the truth table of an AND gate, while this looks like a truth table of an XOR gate. Now, the key idea for us is to utilize these binary operations in order to introduce some redundancy in the bits that you generate. This, these can be used to detect and correct errors. In other words, let us say that you have a bit sequence which is potentially coming from speech or from an image or whatever it is. Before you convert them to symbols for transmission, we are going to add some redundancy. Okay? What does this redundancy mean? Let's say you have five bits. You're going to make them seven bits, where these additional two bits are going to be used to detect some errors or you know correct some errors in the first five bits and so on. Now, this binary operations can also be looked at as uh, in, in a particular cases as operations on a field, and there's a huge uh, array of discussions on algebraic error control coding, which is more general than this. But we will be discussing this particular field, so to speak, where you have modulo 2 operations and all the other operations that you typically know like addition, subtraction, multiplication have some very common kind of meanings. Like if you know these two, then you are able to use these to good effect to perform error control coding. Let us now proceed in our discussion and see what error control coding is about. <clears throat> First, we will now look at what the adversary model is, that is what is the problem that you're dealing with. The problem that you're dealing with is that bits get flipped due to errors. That is, if you have noise, 
let's say you use BPSK or whatever your, your other constellation, noise causes the symbol to get detected incorrectly. The symbol being detected incorrectly results in a bit being detected incorrectly. Thus, we need a channel model that essentially characterizes this kind of you know, uh, errors that can occur at the bit level. So we focus on the binary symmetric channel. Intuitively, what the binary symmetric channel says is that if you transmit a 0, then hopefully a 0 will be received. Sometimes a 1 is received. If you transmit a 1, hopefully a 1 is received, but sometimes a 0 is received. But if the probability of a 0 getting flipped to 1 or a 1 getting flipped to 0 is equal, we call it a binary symmetric channel. That's what symmetry means. So, so this is a channel model that takes in bits one at a time and yields one bit out with an error probability p. So this channel flips each bit with a probability p. Now one thing is typically we have say 0 is less than or equal to p less than or equal to 0 0.5. Now this picture is basically a good way to understand this channel model that is you have 0, you have 1 being sent. You have 0 being received, 1 being received. Let us say this is sent, this is received. Now let us say that you have a binary symmetric channel with bit flip probability p. A 0 is received as a 0 and a 1 is received as a 1, each with probability 1 minus p. But a bit flip can happen each with a probability p. That is there is a pro it's like whenever you get a bit you toss a biased coin if the coin comes up with the higher probability event you essentially just give that bit at the receiver if the coin comes up with a lesser probability event you then give it to the you then flip it and give it to the receiver now why did we say that the p is less than or equal to half or less than half rather less than or equal to is okay but less than half the reason p is less than half is because if the probability of a bit flip is more than half, like say let us say that p is equal to 0.9, then with probability 0.9, sending a 0 is going to result in a 1 and sending a 1 is going to result in a 0. So, you must essentially swap these zeros and 1s and then you will get a binary symmetric channel with probability of bit flip of 0.1. That is <coughs> taking p to be more than half means you can just flip the 0 and 1 at the receiver and then you can just get a binary symmetric channel with a 1 minus p which is less than half. This is something which you can think about. So we will be dealing with binary symmetric channels with 0 less than or equal to p less than half. This half is also a special case. The reason p is equal to half is a special case is because if p is half, then let us say that I am going to call this sent value as x and received value as y. What you have is y is equal to x xor n or x plus n, okay, where n is the n is basically resulting from the BSCP. So, this is equal to 0 with probability half, 1 with probability half. In this particular case, if you find out the relationship between y and x, you will you can actually show that y and x will be uncorrelated. In fact, they will be even independent, you can say. You know why? Because if you if you know if you are given n, then you know you can always figure out x. But if you are not given n, then this particular operation is essentially saying I am going to toss a coin and with equal probabilities I am going to flip them. So this is as though you have no information about x. Okay? So in other words, if you are given y in this situation, the probability of, I mean, probability of x being 1 and 0 is essentially half. That is basically the, um, you know, intuition. So in other words, this implies that x is equal to y, let me just erase this and just use consistent notation. I can write y plus x because minus is the same as plus in this particular binary operation regime. So if, sorry, this should not be plus, n. 
So now, in this particular scenario, irrespective of what y is, uh, your x is going to be completely independent of y. Okay? I am going to leave it as an exercise for you to prove it, but the intuition is that even if you had no, in no y, you know, just x is going to be just, you know, x is going to not be dependent on y in the sense that this n essentially is going to just flip bits randomly and you are going to get no information. That is why we will always consider the case where 0 is less than or equal to p less than half. Okay? Fine. Now, so the binary symmetric channel flips bits with a probability p, typically 0 is less than or equal to p less than or equal to half. This is strictly less than, but that is okay. A binary symmetric channel with probability p equal to half is going to result in is going to essentially result in a problem, in the problem being that you are going to have uh, no information, you are going to get no information at the receiver. Now, a practically useful model is BPSK over AWGN. In this case, you can model it as a binary symmetric channel with P is equal to Q over root of 2 AB by N0. How does this work? In the case of BPSK, you are sending the symbols minus 1 and 1. When you send minus 1, there is a probability of q of root of 2 e b by n naught that that minus 1 is being detected as 1. If you send 1, the same probability q of root of 2 e b by n naught is there that that 1 is incorrectly detected as minus 1 due to noise. And this is a binary symmetric channel. Now, in this case also you can see that as n naught goes to infinity, okay, as n naught goes to infinity, you are going to get q of 0, which is half, which makes complete sense because when you have an infinite amount of noise, there is no way you can detect your symbol as plus 1 or minus 1. So, there are of course multiple simplifications for other modulations also you can do, but this is a very intuitive way of understanding it. A BPSK over AWGN system essentially reduces to a binary symmetric channel under this kind of assumption. Let us now go towards a first, our first useful example of a an error control code. Now, notice that I have deliberately said error control code and not necessarily error correction. Coding can be used for both error correction and control, but error control codes is a general kind of term that signifies that you can not only, de you can detect errors, maybe not correct them. So, you can, there are some codes which can detect errors, some codes which can detect and correct errors also. So, we are going to start with a code that can be used to detect errors. This is called the parity check code or the parity check codes. The key idea is you can take k bits okay, and add a k plus 1th bit so that the whole string has even parity. So, there is an example which is a 3-2 parity code. Let us actually just write that out once and then go through it. So, let us just expand our description there. This is actually a single parity check code. Okay. So, let us say that you get your bits 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 and so on. Okay. These are your bits which are to be transmitted. Now, in the case of parity check code, let us say we say it is 3, 2. In this notation, 2 is the number of information bits that is the original data bits that you are going to take and 3 is the coded bits for every 2 or in this case k information bits. So, in this particular case, you are going to take 2 bits at a time and then output 3 bits at a time before you send it to their constellation modulator or whatever symbol modulator or whatever it is and convert it to OA form and do all those operations. So, the number of information bits in this case is 2, the number of coded bits is 3. And what is the rule? The rule over here is when you have 0, 0 as the group of 2 bits, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. We are going to add one parity bit such that the sum total of all these are basically it has to have an even number of ones because if you want to remember we are now in the domain of <coughs> uh, modulo 2 addition and multiplication. 
So if you want to add all the uh, digits in this three block of three to add up to zero, that means that you have to have either all of them to be zero or two ones because one plus one is zero. You cannot have one one or three ones. So zero zero, you have to add zero because zero plus zero plus zero is essentially zero. Zero one, you have to add one because zero plus one plus one is zero. One plus one is zero. Remember in the region, in the system that we are operating in, one plus one is zero. One plus zero again is one for obvious reasons, and one plus one is already zero, so we have to append zero. So this is the particular code book that we have. This is the this is the code book that we have. Now with this code book, let's say that these are the information bits. So what are our coded bits? We are going to add zero zero, and I'm going to add a gap. 1 0 1 1 0 0 1 0 this is 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 and this is enough let's just add the parity bit for these so for 0 0 what is our parity bit it is 0 for 1 0 our parity bit is 1 for 1 1 our parity bit is 0 0 1 our parity bit is 1, 0 1 our parity bit is 1, 1 0 it is 1. So now instead of sending, let us see, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 bits, you are going to end up sending 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17. So instead of sending 12 bits, you are essentially going to send 3 6 9 12. 18 bits. This is where a redundancy comes in. <coughs> the parity bit is a redundancy. Therefore, you are going to incur overheads. In fact, the codes, the block codes and the binary codes I am talking about have a concept of rate. Okay, that is the number of information bits divided by number of coded bits. In this case, you can do 12 upon 18 or better yet 2 upon 3 because for every 2 information bits, you have 3 coded bits. So obviously, your rate meaning earlier you were sending 1 bit per bit so to speak in an uncoded fashion, but now you are sending 2 bits, uh, 2 information bits in every 3 transmitted bits. So, 66.66 percent is the rate and 33.33 percent is the overhead that is technically you know you should uh, you should be careful in when defining overhead. One third of the fraction of the bits are essentially overhead. So, your rate is one third. Okay, and you could, if you want to define it as the number of bits over and above, then you can say it's 50 percent overhead because for every two bits it's one. But maybe I won't call it overhead. Let me just call it redundancy. That is one third of the bits that you transmit are for redundancy. Okay. So, in general, when you have an n k load, we will go through it, the rate will be k by n. Now, let us actually analyze this particular code. What happens? So, let us say that 0, 0, 0 is sent okay. and let us say that exactly one bit error occurs. Among these three bits, exactly one goes bad okay so then what well, that means one of the bits got flipped so that means you got either 0 0 1 0 1 0 or 1 0 1 these are the three possible one bit error patterns for this block of three coded bits now for all of these you can conclude that there is a parity 
mismatch. So, one error has occurred, right? Because there is a parity mismatch. The mismatch among the parity, because if you add all of these up, you should get 0, again modulo 2. So, 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 1, oh, this should be 0, I am so sorry. Yeah. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 0 and you end up getting a parity of 1. You always, your rule was that the parity should add up to 0, that is all the element bit should add up to 0. That means there should be an even number of ones. Unfortunately, there is an odd number of ones. So, the parity check code, therefore, can detect single errors and no errors, of course. That means, what is the benefit of this particular code? Let us say that you want to analyze bits two at a time. You code them and make them 3 at a time. If you get an error in a block of 3 bits, you can say, okay, there is some error in these bits, I am just not going to consider them. So, this allows you to make a bit of, uh, you know, you can basically make some bit of decisions to say, okay, the, an error has happened and I am not going to consider them. <coughs> Let us take this particular example, okay. I am just going to take these, let us see. Okay, I'm just going to take these. Okay, now let us actually come up with a bit pattern, an error pattern. Okay, I'll say zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero one, one, zero. 0, 0, 1. Okay. Let us look at this one now. What do you get if you just, let us say this is a binary symmetry channel and you basically have to just add these one below the other. That is you have y is equal to x plus n and n is basically this kind of, you know, 0 with probability 1 minus p, 1 with probability p independent of x. This is the model. You get 0, 0 and these are realizations of n basically. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, okay, this is 0 because 1 plus 1 is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Here you get 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, okay. It has odd parity because the number of 1s is odd, it is 1, reject we just do not consider it. That is one way to look at it, we will not consider it. 1, 0, 1 has even number of 1s, consider it. 0, 1, 0 has odd number of 1s, do not consider it. 0, 1, 1 has even number of 1s, consider it. Now, here is the interesting thing. It, till now, in all of the places we saw, there was only one bit error among the block of 3. Like, there is one bit error here, one, 0 or 1 that is. Here there is 1, here there is 0. Here there are two bit errors. If you have two bit errors, then the resulting thing is actually a tick, but I am marking it as red because it is wrong. Your single parity check bit, 3, 2 parity check code made a mistake here because there were two bit errors and these two bit errors among three caused the even parity to return. So, what was sent was 0, 1, but what you got ended up being something like 101. So, essentially you made two bit errors while detecting. See, how are you going to detect at the receiver? If the parity is correct, you drop the last bit. Let us say this is 101. Parity is correct. Information bits was 10. Parity added was 1. So, at the receiver, I am just going to take this one. Similarly, let us look here. 011. Information bit was the one in blue, which is 01. The one was the parity bit. I am going to throw it out. I am just going to take 01. Great. Over here, there is a problem. 0, 1, 1 was sent, but because of two errors, 1, 0, 1 ended up coming and now I end up taking 1, 0, which means I have ended up making two bit errors. In other words, in case there are, there is more than one bit error, the parity check code will fail 
and it will actually give you a wrong answer. It will give you a wrong answer. This means it, it's going to not even detect that there is an error. It is just going to say it looked like no error has, error has occurred. This is the price you pay. Similarly over here, can you guess what it is? There is one bit error, one zero and odd parity will not take it. So this is basically something which you can think about. In case there are two bit errors, the parity check code fails. The failure mode being that when there are two bit errors, it is fooled into thinking that no bit errors have occurred and you end up making a mistake. Because the way we have designed the parity check code, all you do is you drop the last bit. Once you drop the last bit, which is the parity bit, if everything is correct, you get the information bits. Unfortunately, you may end up making errors. <clears throat> now, the third bit acts like a check and it checks single bit errors. That, that's how we discussed. And if you want to expand to other sizes, it is very easy to expand to various other sizes. For example, you can do a 5-4. Let's say example, 5-4. Take 4 bits, 1-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-1-0-1-0-0 and so on. Now, the last bit always is going to give you a parity. Let's take an example. Let's say you take 1-0-1-0. It already has an even number of 1s, add a 0 at the end. If you take 1011, add a 1 at the end so that you get 4 ones essentially. So now you can do this and the uh, a general k, k plus 1 k parity check code has a rate k by k plus 1. The redundancy is 1 by k plus 1. Now if you make the parity check code larger and larger, then there is a problem because if you make it larger and larger, there will be many more even number of bit errors that is going to that are going to be detected and you will end up making a lot more mistakes. So that is something you have to bear in mind. Now let us look at the probability of making errors in the case of a parity check code. Let us say take a 3-2 parity code. The probability that you would make no error in a block, no error in a block of 3 is 1 minus p the whole cube. The probability of a single error is 3p times 1 minus p the whole square. Why? Because you are going to have one error and the error can be in the first spot. So p times 1 minus, 1 minus p the whole square or 1 minus second spot 1 minus p times p times 1 minus p the whole square or 1 minus p times 1 minus p times p. You have to add these up because these are mutually exclusive. So you get 3p into 1 minus p the whole square. For, the, for more errors, now if, if these two events happen, the code will successfully be able to either detect no errors, in which case you can accept the uh, bit sequence and then just take away the parity or if there is a single error, it will say no, I got a single error. Now if there are more errors, okay, then the code fails. In other words, if you have a block of 3 bits, okay, if you have 0 errors or 1 error, the code works beautifully. But if you have 2 errors or 3 errors, in which case if you just add those up, you get 3 p square times 1 minus p plus p cube, then the code cannot you know, detect the errors and you know, the code essentially fails. It cannot detect it correctly and it will in fact give you incorrect answers. But there is still a slight uh, benefit from using this code. In the case of, you know, in the case where you are going to deal with, um, yeah, in the case where you are going to deal with an uncoded system, the probability of failure for a single bit is p. The probability of failure for two codes is essentially uh, you can check if you are going to take two bits, right? then the probability that you are going to make a mistake is essentially p square if both are wrong plus 2p times 1 minus p the whole square. Sorry, 2p times 1 minus p rather. In this case, this 3p times 1 minus p the whole square is generally better. Okay? You can verify this by doing a calculation. In fact, there is an exercise you can do. So, finding out that there is a single error is actually useful, but you can't find out if there are two errors or more because you are going to make a mistake and one more thing is you cannot correct any errors using a parity code. You can detect some errors, you cannot correct them. The overhead is you can say 1 upon k plus 1 or redundancy and the rate is k by k plus 1. This is something that we have seen. Now this is an example of a parity check code that can be used to check the parity and detect some errors. But this code cannot correct errors. In the next class, we will be discussing another family of simple error control codes, block codes that can be used to
correct errors as well and that can actually make, I mean you can of course detect some errors and also correct them meaning that you can actually get back the information bits despite the coded bits being flipped. Let's see that in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.